On April 5, 1815, in Indonesia, a volcano by the name of Mount Tambora erupted. Locally, the effects were devastating, according to William and Nicholas Klingerman in their book The Year Without Summer, 1816, on the volcano that darkened the world and changed history. An entire population on the island of Sumbawa was killed, and the British sailors in the area reported entire islands of pumice that had to be cleared. The Lieutenant Governor of Java heard the blast 800 miles away, and assumed it to be cannon fire from somewhere in the distance. Troops were dispatched to defend a neighbouring town, and coastal cities sent out ships in search for a ship in distress, assuming that someone was firing the cannons to signal an emergency. While the effects were devastating locally, worldwide it was hardly noticed at the time. It wasn't until modern science began to look more deeply into it that the full impact of this volcano in a remote region of the world was fully understood. It is considered one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions to have ever occurred in documented history, with some even calling it a supervolcano. With an even more devastating impact than 1980's eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington, the eruption was so violent it caused Tambora to blow off much of its summit. It went from around 4,000 metres to 2,850 metres above sea level. Here are five effects that the Mount Tambora eruption of 1815 had on the world, some of which can still be seen today. The summer of 1816 was so cold, there was snow reported in June. Most crops failed because of such a short growing season. People actually had to wear coats during the 4th of July celebration in Washington DC. All over the Northern Hemisphere, the cold weather was devastating. Crops failed in both the UK and the US. The economic impact this had on the world was extreme as much of the people were already in a state of depression following the end of the War of 1812. Clockmaker Chauncey Jerome, a resident of Plymouth, Connecticut at the time, recorded in his journal that on the 7th of June, already dressed in thick wooden clothes and an overcoat, he had to put his tools down and put on a pair of mittens because his hands had gotten so cold. Even China and Tibet reported unusual weather. In June of 1816, the logbook of one ship exploring the South Sea noted that the landscape still appeared to be like winter. In Tibet, a surveyor by the name of Webb was snowed in for several days around the summer solstice, and several historical documents confirm a snowstorm in June lasting for three days. At the time, there were many theories put forth to explain the old weather. Some of these included a high degree of sunspots, while others thought cutting all the trees down had allowed the cold air to move down from Canada. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was started in Palmyra, New York, when a young boy named Joseph Smith went out into a field to pray about what church to join. The land in Palmyra had become incredibly cheap a few years before Joseph and his family moved there, after a mass exodus occurred from the area. For months, newspapers had been running ads stating that land was being sold for two to three dollars in upstate New York. So after his third crop failure in a row, Joseph Smith Sr. decided to move his family from Vermont. Among them included his young son, Joseph Smith Jr who would later found the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons. The reason why the land was so cheap was because many people were heading for the western frontier in Ohio, where the weather was milder. Smith Sr. went ahead with his endeavor, established a small business and sent for his family. According to the beliefs of the Latter-day Saints religion, at 14 years old, young Joseph would venture out into a grove of trees to pray and find out what religion was the true religion, because of the interest and growth of a wide variety of congregations in his town. Part of this growing interest was caused by several natural calamities that had occurred in the years previous. These calamities included the New Madrid earthquake in 1811 and the severe and cold weather in 1816 following Tambora's eruption. This grove of trees that Joseph Smith would venture into to pray 
would be found around the family's farm in Palmyra. Many other places of significance would be found in this area as well, including Hill Cumorah, which is where Mormons believe he found the plates that would later become the Book of Mormon. Before 1816, cholera was considered a local disease of India and Bangladesh. However, it is quite sensitive to changes in aquatic environments, where it will evolve rapidly. Mount Tambora's eruption not only caused the temperatures to drop in the region, the expulsion of volcanic gases changed the chemistry of the waters enough to allow for rapid mutation. This mutation enabled cholera to go from being a localised disease to spreading worldwide, including the United States and Europe. This disease is known to cause massive fluid loss from the body and can be deadly if not treated quickly. While very few cases are seen in areas with treated water, it is still seen in many parts of the world to a high degree. Without quick medical intervention, the prognosis for people who come into contact with the disease is very grim. On May 24, 1817, famed English novelist Jane Austen took a carriage ride to the hospital in Winchester, England. It rained the entire way, and while it is not fully agreed upon what she died of, she passed away on July 18, 1817. She already suffered from chronic rheumatism before temperatures plummeted in 1816. Her hands shook as she wrote, the cold and damp was causing her back pain to worsen, and she tired easily. In a letter she wrote of the frequent rains, hoping that they would cease and the weather would warm up. The story of how Frankenstein came to be is a well-known tale. Mary Shelley found herself indoors with a group of friends during a rainstorm in Switzerland when they challenged each other to write a story to share. What most people don't realize is the rain had been falling around Switzerland for weeks. What was supposed to have been a comfortable summer excursion of camping, fishing and riding around the Alpine lakes had found the friends trapped inside instead. When she first arrived in Switzerland in May, she complained in a letter to a friend that the weather was very cold with heavy snow. These scenes and the unusual weather would become the setting for Frankenstein, one of the most famous books ever written. Since outdoor excursions were limited to a few good days, Shelley and her group of friends usually found themselves huddled around a fire at Lord Byron's rented cottage. They discussed all manner of things to pass the time, from galvanism, a popular scientific theory involving electrical shocks to jolt life into an inanimate object, to telling old ghost stories. On the night of June 18th, 1816, Lord Byron read Mary Shelley and the rest of their companions the poem Christabel, which started the early thoughts of her famous monster to form. She would gradually finish her story in the final months of that year. The eruption of Mount Tambora caused some changes to the earth that were short-lived in a geological sense, but in the year they were felt it caused massive catastrophes to humanity. Humanity wasn't prepared for the food shortages then. If something were to happen today, would we be any better off? Tambora isn't the only large volcano in the world, and many people are still waiting for others to erupt, such as Yellowstone. 